Hey guys, how's it going? This is the bald metal nerd coming at you with another video. And you're probably asking yourself, why is there a Game Boy and some other crap in this frame? Well, the iPod has nothing to do with this video, <laughs> so let's get that out of the way. Um, obviously, what I have here is an original Game Boy. This is not my childhood Game Boy uh, that I had when I was a kid. This is just a random Game Boy somebody gave me. It doesn't work. Uh, well, I mean, it, it works, but it doesn't work correctly. There's a problem with the screen. So what we're going to do today is we're going to do a little bit of an autopsy of this thing, just, just for fun. I'm not really going to try to repair it. just want to take a look inside and see what makes this thing tick, and it'll probably be a little bit interesting for you guys, too. Uh, just for size comparison, I have it next to my smartphone, and, uh, yeah, very interesting, uh, you know, different... Uh, decades of technology, obviously. This is pretty modern here, and this is from the 80s. Um, the, whole so the whole thing is actually only slightly... Sm it's about the same size as my smartphone, roughly. Smartphone does go a little taller than the Game Boy, but obviously the screen is minuscule on the Game Boy compared to the smartphone, and, you know, the whole black and white versus millions of colors. So anyway, whatever. Enough comparison time. Uh... I've already removed the uh, screws that hold the body of this thing together, and it just, you know, kind of pulls apart into two parts here. And uh, what we can see on this side is, this is obviously the speaker. This is the uh, volume control. And it's just a circuit board, and on the other side here, we actually have the headphone out right there, the stereo headphone out. Another board, yada yada. But I'm really interested to see the rest of the components of this thing. So, uh, I guess what I'll have to do, because this is going to probably take me a little time to get the screws off. And no, guys, I'm not really going to try to repair this. So after this video, this thing's probably going in the garbage. So, actually, let me pause real quick. I'm going to actually disassemble this thing a bit more so we can uh, really get a good look at everything. See you guys in a bit. Okay guys, I went ahead and uh, removed all of the components from inside the uh, plastic shell. And uh, as you can see, this of course is just the, uh, you know, huh, I guess I have the whole plastic shell together here. Whatever, let's take it apart. This of course is just the front. We've got the speaker grill front. Speaker grill front. We've got the uh, cutouts for the buttons of course. A and B button start select, D-pad. We got a plastic covering there to protect the LCD screen. And on the inside, not a whole lot going on in there, but there's some glue around the plastic uh, covering. That's kind of interesting that the, pla that the glue is there. Whatever. It's pretty worn down at this point, of course. Next up, we have... Uh, of course is the back there's the interior of, or there's that part of the battery compartment there of course is the battery compartment interesting that there's a metal backing uh, where the cartridge slot uh, is I'm guessing that's probably to prevent some sort of interference between the cartridge and I, I have no idea why that metal backing is there but hey whatever just some metal in there so that's pretty much does it for the shell uh, as far as the interior, oh, interior of the unit, I guess, uh, before I show off the whole unit, there, of course, is the D-pad. And here, of course, is the, uh, you know, the backing for the D-pad to allow it to interact with the hardware. <clears throat> We've got the uh, start and select button right there. It's attached to its backing. What else we got? We've got um, the A and B button right there. And of course, it. There's the backing for that one. This is the uh, power switch. And now we'll take a look at the uh, main circuit board and everything or, uh, separately. Now, this, of course, uh, is the back component, the screen. I'm not interested in repairing this thing uh, further. It's not worth the cost or time that it would take to me to repair this thing. Um, it'd be nice if I could get it going again, but I, it's just I'm not buying a screen for this thing. It's just not worth it to me. 
uh, since I have other ways to play Game Boy games. Um, here, of course, is the uh, speaker. Real nice close-up of it. Exciting, I know, right? Um, here, of course, are the uh, pinouts, or I guess where the uh, pinouts are for the um, buttons. There's, of course, the D-pad, start and select button, A and B button. Exciting stuff, right? Let's see what's on the back of this uh, board here. That, of course, is the volume control right there. Which is pretty cool. Uh, and then you just have capacitors and stuff. I, I'm not an electronics expert. I'm sure somebody is. Yep. So anyway, moving on. Of course, you got the ribbon cable there. Attaching it to you. Let's see what happens if I rip this thing. Oh, it pops out real easy, actually. Oh, cool. Anyway, um, there, of course, is the cartridge slot right there. It has a really big uh, I.O. there with the uh, main board. Um, I'm not sure which one. I guess that's the CPU right there. Since it says CPU on it. Um, let's see what else we got here. I'm guessing probably one is graphics and one is sound chips there. There is the, uh, basically if you had a link cable you could link up with another Game Boy to play two player games. Um, let's see. There, of course, is the on off switch on the inside. That's where the AC adapter would plug in. Yeah, not a lot to it, really. And uh, that's basically it uh, as far as a real tour of this thing goes. But it looks like I could disassemble it a little further and maybe get a get a better look at that LCD because I see a few screws holding something on there do with the LCD let's just try to do it real quick here on camera see if we uh, if we'll get any sort of a reward or if we're just wasting time don't know I've never disassembled a Game Boy before so that's why I legitimately have no idea and I haven't and funny enough I've not watched any videos about this I'm just sharing this with you guys because maybe you'll find it interesting, maybe not. <laughs> Whatever. Let's see. Hey, look at that. We were able to pull it apart. And, uh, cool. All right. I don't think I'm going to disassemble this thing anymore since that just looks like a, that's literally just glass there. And uh, some metal. But yeah, do you want to see the underside of the LCD? Now you have. I know, exciting, right? So anyway, that's pretty much going to wrap this up. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you did like it, as always, please thumbs up, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff. Uh, thanks a whole lot for watching. I'll catch you guys next time. Well, guys, one side note. So this is bonus content, right? I wanted to show you guys the way that I do have to play Game Boy games. I have a Game Boy Advance, right? So, and these play Game Boy games just fine. I have uh, Metroid 2 in here, so let's go ahead and switch the console on. And in a lot of ways, this is actually kind of superior to a Game Boy for one. It has a backlit screen. Right? So you can actually see the damn thing when you're not in direct light. And you can adjust the screen size to be 4x3 or 16x9. And obviously you can see it works just fine. Plus it actually adds a little bit of color to the uh, screen. It's not just straight black and white. You can see some yellow there on Samus and some red. Now granted, it's not true color, but it does enhance the look a little bit. So, I can play Game Boy cartridges all day long if I really want to. Hence why I wasn't super uh, worried about uh, the glare that you see in the uh, video. It's nowhere near that bad in real life, by the way. Uh, the reflection from the light, I don't really see it in the screen interesting what a camera will pick up, but it isn't true to life, so. 
Yeah, good stuff. Anyway. Oh, battery's low on this thing. Might have to charge it up. But anyway, that's basically it. <laughs> you know, hence... Uh, plus, of course, there's always emulators, too, for PC, uh, that you can very easily emulate the Game Boy. So, whatevs, guys. Anyway, that's going to wrap it up.